Cheers for this video going well. I stayed up late last night and I'm like so tired today and I'm like hopefully talking about all the manga that I read last month. I hope it goes really well. I love filming these videos and love chatting about manga so I'm like hopefully it goes well. Hello friends, happy Friday. It is the very first Friday of a new month, which means I am talking about all the manga that I read in the previous month. Last month was so chaotic. It was stressful, overwhelming, and I'm not even gonna lie, it was like good riddance April, good riddance. I mean, there were some, definitely some good things that happened, but overall, it was just, it was just a month, guys. It was just a month, and it really showed in my reading, I feel like, this month. I haven't even done my reading journal pages yet, so I'm using like my sheet of paper with all the covers that I read to put in my reading journal. But I read 27 manga that I know for certain that I read. I did reread my favorite parts in the manga I'm the Villainous so I'm Taming the Final Boss. I think it was my Villainous Top 5 Wednesday video. After that video I was like I'm gonna go reread it and so I just reread my favorite parts. I didn't read from like cover to cover. Then I also just a few days ago I read Haikyuu volumes 43 through 45. Deeply loved it. I totally cried. <laughs> it was a hot mess when cooking dinner that day. I love it so much. It doesn't matter how many times I read the ending of Haikyuu, I cry every single time. It's just so good. It's so amazing. It was a pretty good month of reading. I felt like I read some things that were different than what I usually read. So I was actually really excited about that, that I sort of branched out because I read a lot of shoujo. I love shoujo. Like that's my number one thing to read. But I do like keeping a little bit of diversity, at least trying, you know, one new thing each month that's not in my typical go-to for fluffy or shoujo manga. I did read some digital and I did read volume one of Heart Gear. I talked about that in Books with Robots. I loved volume one. I would just suggest checking out that video if you want more thoughts on it because I wasn't gonna give a review and then I did end up giving a review. Volume one was amazing. I decided not to continue because I tried the beginning of volume two. Really loved the opening chapter, got very emotional, and then the fan service was just, it was pretty extreme for me personally. And I've heard from a few other people that the fan service just gets more intense and it gets worse. And so I just decide I'm gonna I appreciate volume one as it is. I loved it. I loved it so much actually that I really thought about just buying volume one physically. Very, very good. I also read Snowball Earth volume one. This came out physically last month. So good. Oh my goodness. I cried twice. Deeply emotional. It's like Kaiju number eight meets Komi Can't Communicate. I did hear like they're one of the, is it Mecha? I'm pretty sure it's a Mecha anime. I'm blanking on it. I will put the title here. I could see it in my head, but I'm blanking on how to say it correctly and no way am I going to butcher that and have fans come for me. But I've heard it's also like a mashup of that. So if you want a combination of all three of those series, definitely check out Snowball Earth. The art is amazing and it's very emotional, impactful, good action. Really, 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 really enjoyed it. I think outside of The Remarried Empress, which I have been continuing to read and was so devastated that I forgot to talk about the physical last month, but I have been keeping up with the chapters. Very crushed that we are about to hit the season finale of, I think it'd be the third season. I am not ready. The last chapter I read was about Rashita and the men in her life are just garbage. They they all suck. There is like no good man in her life. Seeing how so many people have impacted her negatively and how she has taken responsibility for her actions, admitting that she did certain things that were really bad. But at the same time, like I'm not justifying her actions. It's just like you have nobody in your corner. And it was really, really hard. And to see that she still cares for a certain character, almost a spoiler, but for a certain character, despite the things that are happening, it really speaks a lot about her ultimate motivation is just she, how she went about accomplishing that motivation and fulfilling it was not very good. But it's been very heartbreaking these past few chapters and I honestly never thought I would come to feel any kind of compassion for Rashida's character, especially how much I hated her in the beginning. But honestly, the Emperor is the one who is at fault for so much of this mess and I never realized how much, how delusional I should say, how delusional this man is and the things that he planned and how it affected Rashida. We already knew he was garbage, but like now we know he's garbage times a hundred. He's just, he's just so bad. <laughs> so I've been reading that. Really enjoy it. I think I have like four episodes left because I've been using ads to like watch or like to read ahead. Oh, I'm not ready for 10, but it's been very, very good. So let's go ahead and talk about the physical manga that I read. Me and my friend Maeve at Maeve Ever Manga, we tried, I say tried, yeah, it was me. <laughs> it was tried to buddy read A Devil and Her Love Song. She enjoyed what she read and I actually really liked this 
first volume, but the bullying in this was very, very intense. I confess that I am very sensitive to those things, especially since I don't read manga that has a lot of bullying. And I don't know if like the bullying in these older titles are more impactful in a negative way and more intense, or if I'm just like, so I'm not reading it because I, I feel like when I have read bullying in modern shoujo titles, it's not quite that extreme. But this one, I was trying to compress my feelings when I was reading because I, I love Maria. I love our main girl. Very compelling story. But then that night, I had a nightmare that I was basically Maria and I was being bullied even worse than she was. And I could not come back to this series. I love volume one. I love Maria. But anytime I try to move ahead or like read on, I couldn't do it. I got all caught up in my feelings. And then when I saw for the second volume that the teacher was even in on the bullying, I was like, I'm sorry, Maeve. I'm gonna have to drop it. Even though it was really upsetting that I dropped it because it wasn't like I disliked it. I think I ultimately gave it three stars, but I felt originally before I had my nightmare that it was four stars. So it wasn't a bad series or anything. It was just really triggering for me. And I'm really crushed that I couldn't continue this because it was really good. After that, I was like, I need a fluffy manga. So I read volume one of Anyway, I'm Falling in Love with You. And I feel bad. I know I gave this five stars on Goodreads. I remember nothing. <laughs> I remember nothing. I remember it was really fluffy. I don't even know what to say about it though, because it's just very fluffy. There's not much to the plot. It's just these four guys. Yeah, four guys who are best friends with our main heroine. And it's sort of their everyday life and them struggling with romance, so to speak, and a few other things. So this does have a time, no, is it a time skip? No, it opens up in the future. And then we go backwards and we see the past. And I guess we're working up to the future in later volumes. I'm not really sure. But I loved all the characters really like this guy. I think his name is Shun. He is he is this guy right here in the yellow. If I can get it. I really liked him. Though honestly, I, I loved all the guys. Thought they were really great. I did hear a spoiler for later volumes. So I feel a little nervous like the person said. But it was really good. I'm just sorry that I don't remember it. I'm like, I liked it though. <laughs> I liked it. Oh my goodness, this is peak. This is amazing. I read volume seven of A Condition Called Love. I super duper enjoyed it. Just so good. Every volume is very good. But I really enjoyed this volume because I feel like typically our male lead, he's always getting the focus, like not in a bad way, but I say he's always getting the focus in that when I think of the emotional impact that I'm feeling from the characters, it's always him. Seeing his character development and his growth, it's very, very satisfying as a reader. But Hodoru here, she took the spotlight in that and I just, oh, my heart went out to her because of the struggles that she's having and the feelings that she's feeling and how it's not happy feelings. Like she's struggling with insecurity and you know, what does he see in me kind of thing. Really relatable things. I feel like as a girl who's in a relationship, like when I think of my past self in high school, I really, really enjoyed that. It's interesting because some things hit the ceiling, so to speak. And I loved how Hodoru, how she acted in that situation. Like things could have unfolded so differently, but Hodoru just showed, is it grace I'm looking for? Mercy, compassion, a little bit of all of that, where she could have looked at her boyfriend in a completely new way and be like, dude, I am totally 100% creeped out. We are done. And she said, no, let's work through this. I'm aware of this and we're going to move forward, but we're going to see what we can do to help you in our relationship. I was like, girl, she, Hodoru is just amazing. So really, really enjoyed this volume. The guy that works with both of them at the bookstore, I'm blanking on his name, starts with a K. I did not love him in past volumes. I liked him at first and then I felt like he just said some things to our male lead that super upset me. And I was like, dude, you were, this guy right here, this guy here, I'm blanking on his name. But I'm like, dude, you were in the doghouse. But this volume, he really redeemed himself in my eyes. Really liked the actions that he took to help a friend. And I'm excited to see more of him. I'm excited to see more of him. And I hope that we continue to have, you know, development and that growth. This was just a really good volume and continue to love this series so very much. This was one I did not unfortunately enjoy. And I feel so bombed. I feel so bombed. That's volume one of Tales of the Tendo Family. I do have a first impression video if you're curious about what I thought about this. So I won't go into depth here. I unfortunately will not be picking up physical volumes. If my library gets volumes, then I will most likely check it out, but it's not high on my TBR. It was darker than I expected it to be. So if you're curious about more thoughts, do be sure to check out that video then. Now this one I loved and I also have a first impression of, and this was actually my favorite read of this month, and that is The Villainous's Guide to Not Falling in Love. Again, I have a first impression here. I asked you guys to vote which of these titles of Tales of the Tindo Family and The Villainous one do you want thoughts on? I had both as an option and both won. I love this. I read it twice. I've reread it a few other times here and there, like just favorite moments and such. It's amazing. It's 
so good. And I think it's my favorite read of this month because I did not have it on my radar at all. And I'm just like, pass me. What were you doing? Don't worry. I have future volumes that I'm going to be pre-ordering for this because it was so very good. I felt like it was very fresh. I was about to go into like a ramble of like how I felt it was fresh, that it had its own original things. But again, if you want more thoughts that are non-spoiler, but give more in-depth thoughts, be sure to check out that video. I love this so much. Again, it was my favorite read of this month. I cannot wait for volume two. It was so, so good. This was another favorite read for me. And this was one of my most anticipated releases of this year. And that is Bless volume one. I'm so excited to have this in my hands. I loved it just as much as I did when I read digitally on K Manga. Phenomenal, amazing, so very good. Highly recommend this. I feel like if you enjoy Cinderella Closet, but you're looking for something that doesn't have a heavy romance theme or seems like there's gonna be like a romantic relationship, this is one I would check out. I love the makeup. I love the sort of low-key fashion design that is going on in this, or more, it's more modeling than fashion design, but I love both elements so very much. It was everything. I absolutely adored it. I really struggled if I wanted this to be my favorite raid just because of how much I enjoyed it. Everything was phenomenal. I felt all the emotions that I did the very first time I read it, but even stronger with this second time. Another excellent read was Kimini Todoke from Me To You Soulmate. This was amazing. This blew me out the water, honestly. I don't know what I was expecting, but it's so different than Kimini Todoke. I mean, it has some of those elements and those vibes that are really fun, and there's some very sweet moments, but the Kurumi, girl, you're so different than what I ever imagined. I mean, nothing like I ever thought she would be considering how she was in the main series. I really like seeing her and Sawako's friendship. It was very sweet, and shout out to the creator because we got to see Sawako in college. Even got to see Kaze Haya. He wasn't necessarily part of this story, but we see him at different moments in different panels when Sawako's talking to him on the phone, and I loved it. I loved it. I loved it so very much. I was like, thank you. Thank you, creator, because I needed that. So this was really good. I will warn that I felt like the end was a little bit triggering. It's a very lighthearted read for the most part. I mean, yeah, there is some depth and some emotions that are part of this story for sure, but I feel like the ending, like considering the fluff that was building up to it and the transparency that was happening, I was really taken aback how sort of triggering the ending was. I was like, um, this was not, I can't say this is a full like fluffy read because that ending was not fluffy. <laughs> that ending was not fluffy, but I'm really excited for the second volume. Definitely gonna be picking it up. It was so very good. Very, very excited for the next volume. Okay, so I had a lot of emotional ups and downs, a lot of low moments where I just really felt like I was struggling with depression again, had to reach out to friends and just be honest with my feelings because I have learned when I got help last year that often my depression manifests from me berating myself and struggling with some kind of insecurity means something that feels like I'm not worthy or useful. I bring that up because it really affected my reading. There were a few things that I dropped that I was like, I don't know if this is just my mood right now or if I'm genuinely just not loving this volume. And the reason I say that is because I read Neighborhood Story Volume 2 and I did not love this volume. I don't think it was a bad volume by any means, but I feel like the things I wanted from Volume 1, I wanted more romance of our main girl and a certain monkey. I wanted specifically that. I was coming for that. I feel like the story deviated, like, because this is a fashion manga and I knew that. And that is where a lot of the focus is on the first part. And then there's some other drama though that unfolds. So I was like, this isn't bad, but this is not what I want. And then the later half was really emotional, surprisingly. Like the story sort of went from light fluffiness with some fashion to we are diving into some darker themes that really can affect a person. And I was not prepared for that. So I think maybe it was just the timing because it's not like I disliked it or it was super bad or anything like that. I think it might have just been my mood and I need to come back to it at a different time where I feel more on the up, which I do at this time as of filming this video. I feel mentally a lot better. I'm very thankful for the friends that ask like, hey, what can I do? I might come back to this and see because I am so hesitant to drop this, especially with how much I love volume one. I mean, I feel like this Monica has the hype to her name for a reason. And so it's not something that I am looking forward to dropping or anything like that. I really feel like if I just wait a little bit longer and come back that I will feel differently. I really hope that I do because I want to keep reading. It's just so good. Like the seer, the characters I really love. There was definitely some drama, like I said, I wasn't prepared for, but it's such a fun series. And I feel like with this volume, it shows that yes, it is fun, but there's a lot of heart to it as well. So hopefully I will enjoy it the second time that I come back to this. Another series that I am pretty confident that I am going to be dropping this, unfortunately, and that is Past the Monster Meet Me Lady Volume 3. I don't know, this volume, 
volume did not click with me the same way volumes one and volume two did. Again, it wasn't a bad story like when Neighborhood story, but it just wasn't the same though. Don't know exactly what it is that I felt was missing. I honestly sort of feel that the story is trying to get deeper. We're getting to know the characters better. We're, we're getting to see their backstories, which is never a bad thing. But I honestly think for this story, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't care to know the backstory, the motivation of why they're doing it. Honestly, I just want to see the Blood Mad Duke and our ferocious princess here. I forgot her full name, but I just want to see them eat monster meat and do things with eating monster meat and people love the meat that she's cooking. That is what I want. That's what I came for. That's what I want more of. And yes, we definitely have that. Not saying we don't, but again, it's getting deeper. It's not something that I'm here for. And that is the weirdest thing to say, because again, I feel like if you're getting to know the characters more and why they're doing things and it makes sense of why they're doing them, then you're going to be more invested. But I didn't feel myself getting more invested into this volume. The food parts were definitely great. I was so hungry after I read this volume, but I don't feel I'm going to continue it. And that really hurts to say because I really enjoyed volume one a lot. Volume one is the strongest in my opinion. If you're here for fluffy food shenanigans and then volume two was still good, but volume three just did not hit the same. Unfortunately for me, it is very much a hard one to let go, but I really rather pass this series on to somebody that I hope will enjoy it more than me and is excited to see that this series is adding more depth to it than just eating monster meat. Oh my goodness, I loved reading this. This is The Ice Guy and the Cool Girl, volume four. I remember a Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning, I just sat on my couch and read it. All the fluffy, happy shenanigans. I love this series so much. It's a very, very slow burn. Our couple here is not an official couple, but they're getting there. And I'm like, I'm so here for it. I love the Halloween shenanigans that took place. It was perfection. Loved every single moment of this manga. The only like downside is I wish it was longer because I read them so fast and I always want more. So so very good. Continuing to deeply love this series and definitely recommending it if you need some fluffiness, especially in Office, like rom-com. The characters are great. It's so wonderful. I love it so much. I cannot wait for the next volume to release. Now, Shay at Shay Geeks Out, she was doing a 30 and 30 manga challenge this past month, and I, unfortunately, I feel like I did not technically need it. Yes, I realized that with the Haikyuu volumes that I read earlier this week, that it actually pushed me over, but I'm like, I didn't read cover to cover, so I didn't feel like it technically counted. That was hard. That was hard that I did not not meet that 30 and 30. But I did read two manga that were on my backlog that I had been wanting to catch up and I finally did. It was 100% worth it. And that is I Swear I Won't Bother You Again, volumes three and four. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I forgot how good it is. I do have a, I'm pretty sure I have a manga first impression of volume one somewhere on this channel. If I do, I'll leave it linked in the corner or down below. But I loved it. I loved catching up. I really enjoyed the series. I am unsure of what I can say since it is volumes three and four, but it's more of a time travel story than an izakai. But our best boy right here, oh my gosh, I'm thriving. I'm thriving as a shipper. I was like, I am so much want to see that ship sail. I really loved meeting this character because the first introduction we had of her, I thought she was going to be much different. Things unfolded like so differently than I expected and I was here for it. I love it. I'm so glad that I'm caught up. I am heartbroken that volume five got pushed. I think it was to December. Like it was supposed to come out this summer and then it just suddenly got pushed back. And I'm like, why? Why seven C's? The volumes of this release so incredibly slow that I'm going to stay up to date with it now. This is one that I really love. I have heard that the light novel is a lot more darker and that it explores Violetta's backstory more. And I think as much as I would love to have more of this story, especially a lot faster, I think I'm going to just stick with the manga because I really love the lighthearted vibes to this. I mean, there's definitely moments where you can see like, hey, this is not good. <laughs> and there's some danger that is lurking. But overall, I really, really love it and love the characters. I'm excited to have caught up. I am so excited to have caught up. Again, when volume five comes out, I am planning to read it ASAP, even though I will probably cry later because I'll probably have to wait forever for volume six, but it's happy to be caught up. Love this series so very much. Look, I need y'all to hear me out on this, okay? So Gap Papa was the subtitle, Daddy at Work and at Home. I read volume four and the series is very wholesome, very fluffy, but I felt this volume has some spice. Now, when I say that, okay, there's nothing technically spicy in this when I compare it as a whole to other manga that are spicy. But when you think of the context of the series and how family oriented this volume, I mean, this series is, I was pretty surprised how spicy we got in this volume, how things were sort of low key implied. And I was like, um, I don't know. I was actually a little bit disappointed because there was so many cute family shenanigans and we only had like one, I think it was 
one chapter, opening two, three chapters. No, yeah, the opening chapter was it for, yeah, for the family shenanigans. I was so crushed. I'm like, I'm here for the family. I love seeing the backstory into the parents. Yes, that is great. We got to see the co-worker and that romance, which was great. But I'm here for the family. I'm here for the family. I want this. Feel a little bit hesitant about volume five. I sort of want other people to pick it up, see the reviews, because I want to know, is it going to come back to all the family shenanigans? Or is it going to focus more on the co-worker? Because the co-worker chapters were a lot, actually. I felt like that was a quarter of the volume. And I was pretty surprised about that because last time it was just like one or two chapters, but no, not this time. So there's a lot of backstory, seeing the couple be sort of more intimate. Again, these aren't really bad things, but the family, that is what I'm here for. So I will be curious to see how volume five unfolds and what people say, because I'm not going to pre-order it until I know if we're getting back to the family. The dumpster fire of a manga, no longer heroin, volume six. And this was a dumpster fire, but hold up, Hattori. I think I see some character development development happening never ever imagined that she would be the one that people are going to for advice and her give good advice her give good advice like <laughs> what is going on? I mean, she made a not so good decision later, but she realized how how dumb her actions were, how bad it looks. I mean, she's got a great boyfriend. Like, what are you doing spying on your best friend with Rita? Oh, like a Tory. But she realized, she realized she messed up. I think she's genuinely turned a new leaf. At least that's what I like to think because Hattori is very wishy-washy at times and she may be very determined and then other times she's just not. So I don't know what's going to happen, but her boyfriend Boyfriend's great. I really enjoyed this volume. I was upset with Nakajima the Fool, her best friend. Girl, what are you doing? What are you doing? I felt like she was living up to her nickname in this volume, to be honest. So I was that happy with her actions, though she definitely is more mature than Hattori, I feel, to a degree. Like when we see more into her everyday life, I'm like, okay, maybe you're not quite as mature as I originally thought you are, but she's still overall a little bit more mature than Hitori, so I don't know what's gonna happen with the next volume. I have high hopes for Hitori. I like to feel like she turned over a new leaf. I don't feel she probably has, though. I feel like something's gotta go down because Rita over here has generally turned a new leaf, and he's like, Hitori, I'm gonna love you forever, and, you know, if you decide to marry your boyfriend one day, I'm just gonna be happy for you, and it's like, dude, Rita, if you felt like this, and you're saying all these happy, sweet things, because they, I thought they were very touchy, to be honest, but it's the wrong time, Rita. It is the wrong time to be saying these things. Hattori, you should have said them long a time ago, but I digress. I digress. Obviously, I had a lot to say. I had a lot of feelings, but they were good feelings. Loving the series. Gonna be continuing it because it's a hot mess, and I need to see what these characters are gonna do. Like, are you gonna make good decisions like you did in this one, Hattori? Are you gonna give good advice, or are you going to go back to you in the beginning, and you're suddenly gonna be eyes only for Rita, which I hope not, because her boyfriend is amazing. I feel so bad for that guy, because he, he'd be putting a a lot. He, he puts up with a lot from Hattori and he just takes it in stride. He He's great and Hattori better realize that in the next volume. I was shocked about this one. This was in my top three of favorite reads this month and that is volume two of When I Became a Commoner, They Broke Off Our Engagement. Wow. Okay, so I liked volume one, but I thought volume one was gonna be super fluffy. It was not. I cried. I held my breath. I thought a lot of things was super emotional. I'm like, what is this? This is not what I signed up for. But it's okay. I wanted to keep reading even though I didn't super love it. Volume two you blew me away. I also prepared my heart. I prepared my heart because this one was sad. Definitely you see the results of what has happened in the first volume, the fallout, and I felt like there were a lot of things going on, not in a way that's overwhelming. I don't mean it like that. Emotionally, there was a lot going on with these characters and I just, my heart was breaking. We see backstories and then I love this, our new, I forget her name, but she is the actual sister. You know, they swap, well, in case you don't know, not this fairy, but another fairy swap these two girls out at birth. Technically, she She's supposed to be a commoner and she was nobility, but since the fairy swapped them, she's nobility or was raised nobility and she was raised as a commoner. Now though, the fairy causing more problems has said to her family that, hey, your daughters were switched. This isn't actually your child and you need to go to this place and meet your actual daughter. And of course the family's like, we want our real daughter. We don't want this daughter. We've raised her entire life. Don't get me started. <laughs> Don't get me started on this, okay? But they switch and now they're in their new homes and it's not easy. And the way though that this girl be calling out the brother or who she thought was her brother. Let me get a picture of him. I forget his name actually. But calling out the brother. Is this how you treat her? And he, she's just saying a bunch of things that are fat 
facts. I'm like, girl, facts, call him out for his actions. What was he doing? What was he thinking? I love those moments because we see the heart of how he really felt. And I'm like, yes, yes. I'm like, let that man sob. I was like, I don't care. That man, he was wrong. I felt a lot of feelings, okay? I felt a lot of feelings when I was reading this. It was so good, though. It was just very upsetting, not triggering, but upsetting seeing the things that these fairies have done. And I'm just like, stay out of these humans' lives. <laughs> And she says, like, the fairy that caused all these problems, she says, like, this touching line about humans and how amazing they are. I'm like, if they're so amazing, just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. So I'm very curious to see what's going to happen next. Definitely going to be picking out volume three because I very much enjoyed this. Easily a five-star read for me. And that's what I'm saying is in my top three favorite reads because I was shocked how emotionally invested I was and how amazing it was. I prepared myself that I probably wouldn't super love it. Wrong. I loved it. Very, very good. Highly recommend. Not sure if I can compare it to anything exactly to say if you like this then you might like this you know and so forth but I feel like there's a lot of heart to this series it is very gripping for that I hope that the fiance or the ex-fiance of our main girl let that man be better than all of her family because her family is just awful it's just awful but it's so good highly recommend this cannot wait for the next volume as well this was easily another favorite read of this month and I'm saying that this was my favorite manhwa that I read this month and that's volume six of why Ray Leanna ended up at the Duke's Mansion. So good. It was so good. What were all the things that happened? I feel like there were so many different things that happened and I actually reread this twice this month. I loved every moment. Seeing Noah jealous is everything. I will confess though, I, it's probably an unpopular opinion. I love Justin. Okay. Justin, this guy here, he's funny. Now I'm not shipping him with Ray Leanna. He needed backup when it comes to shipping. He, back up, man. But I love him on page because he's so funny and he does not care if he looks shameless or not. He's like, Rayliana, I want you. And he does things and he's not afraid to go out of his way, even in front of Noah to try and be her man. And that of course makes Noah angry. Like when we think of the engagement ring scene in this, so good. Perfection. I absolutely loved it. Like, yes, feed me more of that. Feed me more of that moment. Thank you, Ray Leanna. She did not break my heart this volume. She is feeling some emotions. She's going through some struggles and we're seeing it. And I'm just like, Ray Leanna, please cave. Please cave, girl. Please cave. <laughs> and return Noah's affections. There was a very good romantic moment. And I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm thriving reading this. All of it was really good. I love when there was a scene talking about spring. Justin was involved and her knowing why Justin was popular with this certain group of ladies. All of it was just so good. So amazing. Highly recommend this. So glad we got a new volume. Hopefully the next volume will not take forever. There was one thing with Beatrice. I want to know. I want to know some things. I, I feel like we said one situation or one conversation, excuse me. Well, like, what does it mean? What is going to take place? I need to know. And the ending of this was a cliffhanger, but Ray Liana Slate, as she always does, she looks so cool. Like, man, Ray Liana is so awesome. Really, really, really enjoyed it. Highly recommend this manga or this, excuse me, this manhwa as well. Cannot wait for the next volume. Oh, it was just so good. Every single single moment was absolute perfection. I'm a little on the fence about this and that's 15 minutes before we really date volume two. So I love volume one. I know I gave it five stars. I remembered absolutely nothing about volume one. I had to go back and reread it, which I feel like going into volume two, technically you don't have to reread volume one. This is a very slice of life series where not every chapter is interconnected, though I feel like more so in this volume the chapters were, but you didn't have to. But I was just like, I don't remember anything, anything at all. I enjoyed this volume. I did not love it as much as volume one. I don't know if this was mood reader problems or what. There was some great sweet moments in this, but I just, I don't feel overly excited to continue it. Yes, it's sweet. Yes, it's great. But shelf space is legitimately becoming a problem here soon for me. So I'm trying to be extra diligent on dropping things if I'm not loving it. Thank you guys for all of your support and encouraging words to it's okay to drop things because you guys are definitely impacting me in a positive way with that and helping me to remember like, hey, it's okay if you don't love something. And just because you do drop something doesn't mean that you hated it either because not a bad story. I definitely feel like if you like childhood best friends to lovers, oh, and that was why. That was why. I forgot. I had a conversation with my husband. Okay, so I love the childhood to best friends or wait, childhood best friends to lovers. I love that trope. I can't get enough of it. I think it's great. But then I read Gazing at the Star Next Door and it is, it feels like almost every manga I've read that has that trope, it has just fell out for me. And I have never been in this situation where I find myself reading a similar trope in a different 
manga and thinking about the one manga like oh this is good but it's not as good as x thing in this situation like oh this is good but it's not as good as Casey at the star next door i'm like we cannot do this with all the villainous manga that i love and i read i'm like i've never compared it i've never i mean villains are destined to die is the peak that is the best right there nothing can top it but i'm like i don't compare the villainous like okay this didn't level up or reach up to the excitement of penelope and then like i'm gonna drop it i don't ever do that okay like that no so I'm like, why am I doing this with a trope that I feel like is hard to find? I was really sad. I was really sad. I would love to also know if you've ever had that happen to you, how do you deal with it? Because I don't like this. I do not like this. I'm like, this isn't even like a conscious decision I'm making. It's just, I realize a subconscious decision because if my mind is starting to wander when I'm reading manga, which it did in this volume, then I know I am not loving it because if I'm loving it, I am fully invested into the story. So that that's sort of what happened with my feelings, my thoughts for this. I don't think I'm going to pick up volume three, even though I'm sad because I went back a few days ago and reread it or skimmed it. And I'm like, it's still good. But I'm like, I just... It'd be something I would check out from the library. It wouldn't be something I would buy. It would be something I would check out from the library. That'd be nice for a day where I'm like, you know what? I don't have anything to read. Let me just read this. That is what it does. I feel like it accomplishes its goal well for that. I guess that's what I'll just do moving forward is hope my library gets it and then keep reading volumes that way. This one was really good. And this is See You in My 19th Life Volume 2. I kept saying See You in My 17th Life. I don't know where I got that from, but I love this. I gave it five stars because I feel like this series hits differently in that it's like time travel, sort of, I guess. I don't really know what it would fall under, but it had a lot of emotions and I really love the male hero and how things are tackled, how our characters handle things, and honestly, how our main girl, she may think she has everything figured out, like not in a prideful way, but she has a conversation with a character where she's like, he's either gonna do X thing or Y, that's it. And she's like, no, people, like the person she's talking to, that character's like, no, people are not like that. You may think there's only two decisions that can be made, but he's a person with feelings he could change things and there could be like 10 options available to him. You don't know what he's going to do. So don't assume that because of all of her experience that she knows what he's going to do next. I really, really like that. I thought it was very fresh, very engaging. I just like the characters. <laughs> I'm curious to see where this romance is going to go. And I feel like I don't have a lot to say because when I was reading this volume, I was struggling fiercely of like, okay, I'm like, this is great, but I just want to see the end. I just want to see them finally become a couple. And I'm like, Laura, you got to enjoy the adventure. So I had to put it down, then pick it back up and get out of that mindset of wanting to rush things. Like enjoy the story because the cool thing, well, I mean, I think it's cool as a reader, but not for our main girl. The cool thing is, is that she has these rules that she's made from her past life to not interact with previous family members. Here she is doing that though. She's having to make decisions. Is she going to still talk to this guy? I wonder if she's ruining his life because she sees the trauma that he's been going through, how it's affected him. And she's like, wonder if I I need to get out of his life to help his life be better. And she has to face that answer of what she's going to do. Is she going to choose to stay in his life or choose to leave and feel like maybe she's making things better by leaving? I loved it. It was really good. So maybe I have a lot of things to say about it. But at first I was like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Was here for it. Very excited for volume three. This series continues to surprise me. And I'm just very thankful for my friends, Jess and Claire, who recommended it to me. that They put it on my radar because it has been a delight to read. So good. Next up, I was buddy reading another series with my friend Maeve, who's awesome. And I laugh because I feel bad because I, I don't know what to say about this one. So it was Odoman. Okay. I have in the past in 2022, I think it was December or November. I read volumes one through five. I had loved the series, gave each volume glowing five stars. I tried volume one. Loved it so much. It was amazing. Very good. Felt the same way even more. But then I got into volume two and I'm like, okay, this is good, but I don't like this one character at all. Like, why didn't I mention this in my Goodreads review? I was like, there's a little bit of an outlandish situation that happens. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is pretty out there. This is pretty out there. Volume three had the same thing with like another outlandish situation. And I'm like, okay, I don't know why. Like, I knew that that was in there, but I didn't love it the same way the second time when rereading it. There's so many cute and fluffy things about it and I love the characters. 
like Judah right here. He's my favorite character. I absolutely love him so much. And I love Asuka, our main character. And I think I've seen her name wrong, but Rio is what I've been calling her in my head. I love all three of them. They're great. And honestly, if the story could just center around them eating lunch together and them encouraging Asuka to be his girly guy self, I would read the whole thing for that. I mean, the outlandish situations are not bad, but it was just so out there for me that I could not connect fully with the story because of that. And I was like, okay, this is 18 volumes long of a series. I'm like, I don't know if I can handle all of these outlandish situations, like having more of them. So what I did, and I told Maeve, and I apologized to Maeve for this, I was like, I'm gonna go read the end and see what happens, which is pretty crazy because I just skipped almost the entire series to see the end, but I loved the characters so much, and I needed to know that what I was wanting was accomplished by the end. It was, but oh my goodness, I actually am really glad I skipped ahead because the things that happened in volume 17 and this certain character that came unseen Ugh, I was so angry and so upset. Like, you're so selfish. Like, it was it was so angry. I was really, really upset when it came to that. But his friends, they came in clutch in volume 18, and I just thought the ending was absolute perfection. What I wanted unfolded times 10. It was so good. And I felt so happy and content, even though I skipped the duration of the series. I loved the ending so very much. And this is a series that I'm unfortunately not going to keep in my collection, even though I love Asuka and Judah and Rio, and I love their interactions so much. Like they are one of the best trios. I adore them, but I don't feel that I'm going to come back to this series to reread it because of the crazy outlandish things that happen. And if you see the situations of what they are, I can't say them because some of them are spoilers. you would like, whoa, this is pretty out there. It's a very unique part of this series. So I don't think it's bad, but it wasn't something I wanted. Again, I just wanted them to encourage Asuka because one of the most encouraging things about this that actually really spoke to me in my heart with some real life struggles that I've been having, I wouldn't say are my passions, but my love for nerdy things. Does it have a place? Am I still helpful with my love for these nerdy things? Can I still be useful to other people? Can I be my real self? And it would be, I guess, desirable to someone else, like not in like a romantic way or anything, but where they're like, hey, I want to get to know you. Hey, I want to get to hang out with you. And so seeing Asuka be able to embrace the girly side of him where he loves sewing and he loves cooking and he loves bright and colorful sparkly things for his friends to say, we love you the most or we love you the best when you're yourself. When you can embrace this side of you, when you can be able to cook to your heart's content because it makes you happy, we love you the most like that. I mean, obviously they still love him when he is covering and hiding those things, but they loved seeing him shine. And that was very encouraging to me that my nerdy passions, I guess you would say, have a place in my everyday life, that they have a place in my future, and that it's not something I need to hide so that I can be a real adult and have real responsibilities. No, no. So I would definitely say that even if I skip the duration of this series, it was still very special to me. And I'm just so glad that I read just the few volumes that I did because it's something that will stick with me for a really long time. And again, grateful I read it, though I'm so sorry. Maeve, if you're reading or watching this, that I didn't read the whole series with you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. For my last read of April, and I did mention this in my Top 5 Wednesday video, I read volume one of My Sister Took My Fiance, and now I'm being courted by a beastly prince. I guess this is volume one. I enjoyed this. It wasn't quite what I thought it would be in the sense I thought it'd be super fluffy, have some cute shenanigans. No pun intended for the fluffy, by the way. But I thought it'd be really cute, and it was cute. But there was surprisingly a lot of politics that played, and there was some scheming that was going on behind the scenes and like front and center. And I was not expecting that at all. I love our hero here though. He is just smitten with our female lead. He is head over heels for Cordelia and I oh, I loved it. I love him in his lion form. That was my favorite part. I feel a little nervous to pick up volume two, not because I dislike this or anything, mainly because I'm not a fan of politics, I'll be honest. I don't like them really in the books I read. I can handle some, but typically I'm just like, you lose me as soon as you're getting in deep and I need to remember who who is who, why, who is who doing this, that, 
I don't like that. <laughs> I do not like keeping up with that. That is not my cup of tea. So I'm a little nervous because there was so much of this at the beginning. I'm afraid it's going to be pretty heavy in volume two. But the romance, I love the romance so much. It was so sweet. When it comes to the romance, it had exactly what I was hoping for. I really, really enjoy it. And I also really love how our main girl, yes, our prince thinks she's very beautiful. I feel like he, yes, he's attracted to her physically. But what he loves maybe most about her is her intelligence. The way that she looks out for her family, despite that her family does not look out for her, that she's thinking of head, that she's very purposeful with her actions. But he's also not afraid to call her out in a loving way and say, stop belittling yourself. Stop thinking so negatively of yourself. Grant, it makes sense because everything she's ever had is taken away from her because of her sister. Her sister wants it. So I get that she feels that she does not deserve these happy things, so to speak. But our prince, like, girl, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. And he's going to do what he can to, I think, help show that she deserves this love, that she deserves to have wonderful gifts that are given to her without worry that somebody's going to take it away. So I, I want to read more. I'm just nervous to know if the politics will be a big thing. I don't want them to be a big thing. <laughs> like I just, I want the romance because it was so good and so sweet and adorable. So I think for this one, I'm going to wait and see what people say for the next volume and then make a decision if I'm going to pick it up or not because I don't want to drop it. I did like it. I just want more of the romance. That is what I'm here for. And those, my friends, are all of the manga that I read last month. I hope that I did them all justice and talked about why I like them or why I was like sort of on the fence and whatnot. But I would love to hear from you, friends. What are some manga or manhwa or books that you read last month? What were some of your favorites? Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.